Hosting Friendsgiving this year? Need a last-minute gift for your Thanksgiving host? Just want to show someone how thankful you are? Do it all with Drizzly, the go-to app for drink delivery. With Drizzly, you can shop around to get the lowest price all from your comfy couch. Can't make it home for the holiday? Send a drink instead. So download the Drizzly app or go to drizzly.com. That's D-R-I-Z-L-Y dot com today. Must be 21 plus, not available in all locations. Tom, Joe Biden touched down here just before 7 p.m. local time and headed straight into a bilateral meeting with Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi. The U.S. president is here for the weekend's G20 summit. Rishi Sunak arrived a few hours earlier, telling reporters he's excited to be welcomed back to a country where, thanks to his own Indian heritage, he says he's referred to as India's son-in-law. Both the Prime Minister and the US President have some complicated hours ahead, because if this summit is going to produce a joint declaration at the end of it, sticking points over Ukraine must be overcome. On board Air Force One, travelling with the President earlier today, National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan. I will not make a prediction on that. I will say that the United States is ready to do our part to deliver a joint statement. And we think there is a joint statement to be had. And the question is, uh, will every country step up, be responsible, be constructive? If the answer to that is yes, then we will get a joint statement, but it's too soon to tell. The problem with that is that Russia is not likely to step up, be responsible, nor be constructive. Moscow is represented here by Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov after Vladimir Putin decided to skip another invitation to appear on the world stage. President Xi Jinping of China is also a no-show, the country's Prime Minister Li Chang filling in for him. The EU is already saying the early drafts of the joint Joint declaration are not tough enough over Russia's assault on Ukraine, but the summit's Indian hosts are still hopeful. Will Ukraine derail no. the talks? A pointed question for Amitab Kant, the Indian government's chief negotiator. G20 is an economic forum. It discusses issues of growth and development. Issues of conflict and war have an impact on growth and development. Whatever we discuss will have to be first discussed by the leaders and they will have to take a formal decision on that. They will indeed and the success of this summit may in Washington be judged by just how much unity Joe Biden is able to forge over Ukraine. He arrived here in the Indian capital at the end of a pretty bruising week for his presidency. Only yesterday, a fresh poll showed his approval rating dipping to just 39%. More than 70% of respondents said Biden, at 80, is too old to seek another term in the Oval Office. And alarmingly for the White House, only 45% of voters agree with the proposition that Joe Biden is honest. Coming to you with this breaking news, David Weiss said he is filing the forms to make sure that Hunter Biden is Indicted. Right-wing talk radio host Trish Regan gleefully telling her audience that Hunter Biden is going to remain a major thorn in his father's side. A special prosecutor investigating the president's son for tax violations and for lying on an application for a gun license now plans to bring criminal charges against him. Republicans are going to town, seizing on news of the indictment to amplify entirely unsubstantiated claims that Joe Biden and his son were in corrupt cahoots with one another. Congressman James Comer of Kentucky chairs the House Oversight Committee. Uh, the Hunter Biden legal team, the Hunter Biden PR people, the Hunter Biden's sh uh, shady characters who were paying him were communicating through him to his father back and forth. There was no wall between Joe Biden and his son Hunter Biden and his shady business dealings. And it was Fox News giving him a platform there to spread those unproven claims. But they are a problem for President Biden. 61% of voters told CNN's poll this week that they believe the president was involved in his son's business dealings. And the more the Republicans just even talk about it, the more it spreads a tarnish that the president may soon struggle to remove. The Secret Service is paying $16,000 a month now to stage near Hunter Biden in Malibu. Who's paying for that? That's a question for the Secret Service. White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre has struggled in recent days against relentless questions by right-wing media operatives like Pete Ducey of Fox News. Hunter Biden is reportedly selling art. 
to pay for his $15,800 a month rent in Malibu. How can you guarantee that people are not going to be buying this art to gain favor with the president? That is a question for Hunter Biden and his representatives. It's, it's I, I know. Of, I hear. I hear. The White House. We know I hear your question. One of our buyers got a job from the Biden administration. Can you guarantee that there is I no hear, quid pro quo? I hear your question. I'm not going to get involved in this. That is a question for Hunter Biden's representatives. So, that is not going to wash for much longer. She needs to get out in front of the train, or else it's going to flatten her. In another blow to the White House, that CNN poll showed that if the election was held today, former President Donald Trump would beat Joe Biden by a 1% advantage. That's obviously well within the poll's margin of error. But for Trump, now beset by serious criminal charges in four separate jurisdictions, it's an incredible result. They don't want to run against me. I'm leading Biden in all the polls. And the last one they want to run against is me, and they know it. The former president on the Hugh Hewitt radio program this week, and whether it was bravado or just something he made up on the fly, for the first time he said that he is ready to take the witness stand when the criminal trials against him get underway. Will you testify in your own defense? Oh, yes, absolutely. So You'll take the that stand. I that, I would, that I look forward to. How are you going to be able to campaign if you're sitting behind a defendant's table in a courtroom? Well, we'll be asking for many dismissals of many of these fake cases. These are fake cases. These are cases were brought by Biden. These are campaign cases. Nobody's done it except in Banana Republic. And again this week, we heard some of his backers suggesting that Trump should match Banana Republic for Banana Republic if he's returned to the White House. The Angry Rhetoric of the Week award goes to Megyn Kelly of XM Sirius Radio. Turnabout is fair play. And if you don't think if President Trump wins again, Hunter Biden's going to jail for something, maybe Joe Biden's going to jail for something, you haven't been paying attention. And these same Democrats who are defending the four prosecutions of Trump will be crying foul. And the rest of us will be sitting there saying, you started this. A phrase I haven't heard since the playground at Brooklyn's primary school. There is one more factor that could complicate life for Joe Biden, and it's the possibility of a third party run for the presidency by a group called No Labels. They claim to be an organization that seeks unity in the United States and that bridges the divide between Democrats and Republicans. And Senator Joe Manchin of West Virginia, a Democrat very much on the right of Joe Biden's party, is refusing to rule out the possibility of a no-labels presidential run. Nancy Jacobson founded the organization. Listen, Joe Manchin, we've known he was at our launch in 2010. He is the honorary co-chair with Senator Susan Collins of the organization. And he is a terrific uh, legislator. And, uh, you know, he stands for this politics. But we this is too premature. Which is not the same as saying he's not running. Many Democrats and moderate Republicans fear that if no labels fields a candidate, they could hand the keys of the White House over to Donald Trump on a platter. And so this week, an advertising blitz began by the anti-Trump Lincoln Project, claiming that No Labels is a front financed by right-wing Republicans to siphon votes away from Biden. They say they're moderates, centrists, problem solvers. It's a lie. Their third-party plan will steal the election from Joe Biden and hand it to Donald Trump. The group denies that it's funded by dark money, but won't release details of its financial backers. We will need to keep an eye on them because in an evenly poised presidential election next year, every vote is going to count. And Tom, resting tonight here in New Delhi, Joe Biden knows that questions are only growing about his decision to seek re-election and whether his campaign can build the momentum against Trump that it may need. When it comes to business travel in Orlando, it's never business as usual. Sure, I could go on for days about all the incredible places to hold meetings, or the Michelin dining, or the breadth of industries that call it home. But when it's time for your business to make the extraordinary happen, Albert Monero of Limitless Solutions said it best. Orlando is an incredible place for innovation. So dive in and see what's happening in Orlando, where the possibilities for business travel are unbelievably real. Learn more at orlandoforbusiness.com.